that you can teach anything to anyone at any stage if you do it in an honest way. And when he said in an honest way, it means that you have to consider who the leader is. And he had an example where he had some eight and nine year olds that he was teaching botany. You know, botany is a six form thing. And how he approached teaching botany was not to teach them about photosynthesis and, and um, you know, those good things. Uh, he did not go that direction. What he did, he allowed them to create a garden. So they had a garden. They planted seeds, peas, right? Watered, of course. Seeds germinate, took the measurements. They saw the first leaves, green. What happens with the green? Um, they still, they, where they say, they talk about making food. You wouldn't talk about photosynthesis just yet because it's a kind of hard concept but they know that the thing is green, um, and that is what in the sunlight will cause um, them to make food. To, so they say it goes from two leaves to four, and then, and so on, right? Then he saw, it, 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 they saw the cycle. So he was able to introduce a lot of biological concepts, concepts, but not necessarily um, introducing the jargon for them where the jargon would have been problematic, but they can't pronounce the words and then just yet, right? Um, and so, and he did a lot of um, of work on, on, on children, showing that children could understand things at a really deep level if they have the concrete experiences. Mm -hmm. and so on. Um, but that is his thing that you have to really um, understand the learner. Right? and what they can understand, grounded in things that they can understand, use their environment to help them um, come up with an understanding of the principles. When students have to grasp the world pattern, they are more likely to remember what they learn, comprehend principles that can be applied, and be prepared for mastering more complex knowledge. So when later on now you talk about food synthesis and you talk about what happens in the leaf, because you cannot see what is happening inside it, um, they, they have a concrete thing, obviously, because they know that it could make food. So that whole process, when you, when you start getting into the complexity of the photosynthetic process and so on, it is easier for them to understand that this thing could take place within um, something that is as flat as the leaf. All right, Cola was another one. He, he Cola works with um, a sultan there, this great thing. So uh, the, the, the chimpanzee sorry, was put in a large cage with a variety of objects, including some short sticks. Here was Sultan then. He manipulated objects in the cage and discovered that he could use the stick to rake things in towards him when he was feeling lazy. So he would sit down and he would with one lump at one end of the stage of the um, cage, and he would take his stick and drag things in there. But one day, Cola placed a banana in a very long stick outside the cage. Both objects were too far for Santa to reach by hand. But the stick was closer than the banana. So what did Santa do? He first picked up one of the sticks in the cage and he tried to rake in the banana. Can't reach. The stick was not quite long enough and he threw it down and stomped off to another part of the cage in a fit of peak because, I mean, he wants the banana. As he started brooding, his eyes suddenly focused on the two sticks and the banana all arranged in a row. That's, that was by accident. He jumped up, ran over to the small stick, used it to rake in the larger stick, and with the larger stick now he was able to reach the banana and read that in. So this is, this is the beginning of cognition, being able to solve a problem, to think through and solve a problem. Carla suggested that the, the next experience involved rearrangement of Sultan's pattern of thought. The A previously raking things, but they are either using one stick to rake in another and then using the longer stick to rake in the banana involved a new application of his prior activity. All right, so we call this problem solving by insight and cognition there. All right. So in terms of cognitive theory, it emphasizes learning with understanding. Right? 
and behaviorism is more learning um, by rule, than by simply repeating um, actions. I shouldn't say simply, but by repeating action. Experts' knowledge is not is connected and, and organized around important concepts. Focuses on processes of knowing. That is why Vina went through the processes so that they can get to understand concepts that would have been difficult to explain with just a chunk and board. Views humans as goal-oriented agents who actively seek information. But sometimes I doubt that, yeah? <laughs> Because, I mean, you have to be expressive that, you know, we have to behave a little bit differently if, if we don't give in to just the behaviors, behaviors in us as opposed to the cognitive in um, Implication for teachers, knowledge of construction, personal involvement, these are all issues that, um, that uh, have implications for our teaching. So what, what is coming out of you when, you when we look at all of those, the, at these theories, these two major theories, we have to look at the other one here. What, what is coming out of, at you? What are you seeing? And this is where the cognition comes into play. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing? Which one? From band? From both, both. From both the behaviorism and cognitivism. Well, what is that give you an insight into learning? Yeah. Is it giving it? Yeah. yeah. What inside of me? Social learning. For me, the cognitive theorists would have more application to teaching and ecology. You're sure that is, that is thinking or that is feeling? What you believe? Well, I'm feeling so. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think some more and stuff about it. But, yeah. but this seems to me to be in line with what what I do to some extent and what I would like to. So, what about behaviors? Do you use behaviors? Well, that's what um, I was about to yeah, say. Yeah, at all? For my opinion, is that although the whole um, field of learning theory has expanded, in fact, under behaviorism, they were able to produce learning. Under cognitivism, they will be able to produce learning. Mm -hmm. Under constructivism, they, they established a theory. Mm -hmm. They applied the theory and used the theory to, to yeah, so, inform so teaching and learning and produce outcomes. So exactly. it's actually that there is not one solution. There is no one. There is not one, one effective yeah. model. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and you see, what I'm going to use in one model, behaviorism, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. is what will happen to you. You get abused because people don't understand mm -hmm. that you may not be seeing things in the way in which everybody else sees it. So um, the, the implication here is that we have a variety of ways in which learning can take place. Mm -hmm. It could be encouraged and facilitated. Um, and I would say that it's important for us to, to be aware of all of the theories because they all impact on learning. Some people, if they don't get both continually, they're not going to learn anything. Mm -hmm. They are, they are behavior. Their whole psyche is oriented to behaviorism, mm -hmm. right? Their behaviors are determined by the external reward mm -hmm. or discipline or reinforcement. There are other people who are much more cognitive and they could reason and rationalize, even in terms of rationalizing their own learning. Right. You know, the yeah. fact I find that's relevant to, um, like in behaviorism, you know, one of the things Van Der Rohe talked about is the characteristics of the model also in, impacts learning. Mm -hmm. And I find that you see that a lot, like, even with students, they tend to have a preference for lecturers who have similar personalities to them somewhat. So when you hear them talk, well, I, talk, I tell them all the time, no names in my class. But when they talk about lecturers whose classes they don't do well in, sometimes it's the lecturers who are very, um, who maybe align more to the cognitive as opposed to the behavioral right, perspective. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and so they expect to see a familiar type of personality right. when they walk into a classroom too. And so those are their favorites. But it is, as I explained to them, I said, 
even when I was going to school, you always had that lecturer who was different. You just have to adjust. Mm -hmm. But they kind of want the, that whole model. Who is the model? Yes, kind of yeah. impacts their learning too. It does. It does. And this is why you have um, students liking to be in certain classes yeah. and not liking to be in other classes. And of course, they will look for people who who they understand mm -hmm. the way which you communicate. Is, is similar to in the way which they will communicate. So um, the, the, the major challenge you will have is where there's only one or two people who will like it, who is like that teacher, but then because most of the other people now will not care when in the class. So it is important to recognize then the complexity of learning, and although we have all of these theories, it doesn't mean that because you, you favor one, I mean the other doesn't exist. So, uh, so let us look at the last one. Okay, I don't have. Oh, I don't. I don't have um constructivism here. I have it. I have it. Can this one just an abridgement? Maybe. Yes. Um. What I was going to say as well, though, in the same way for us, we need to experiment with and be proficient or at least aware of different mm -hmm. teaching and learning styles. Mm -hmm. I think we also need to be sure that as our students may favor one, but they understand and they are able to work in mm -hmm. all of them because right. different situations will require different because things. Because I'm going to ask you when you have people in, in groups, that who are very different learning styles. That is that makes a very dysfunctional group. Yeah. <laughs> because this one is one is thinking through one thing and, and the other one, you, you know, is fighting for something else. And and they don't understand each other. So that is why it's good for them to have uh, to do the learning style inventory up front. Um, so that they are well aware that the the you know, their, their peers can in fact learn very differently. Yes, Dr. Bowen. And I would say that that's actually, for me, I think about the assessment. Because what actually happens is when you teach and you assess on your dominant style, yes. and although it will be very difficult for you to get persons to change their learning style, to the degree that you make certain in the design of your yes. assessment, yeah. you're creating opportunity for students with different learning styles to, right. um, you actually kind of make the space the more yeah. equitable. Yeah. So you so control for your bias mm -hmm. and the individual by making certain assessment data for the range. Right. So, so that's one of the reasons why they always yeah. recommend that you have for your assessments when you final exam, you have a, a variety. You have multiple choice, short answer. You don't need to have five essays. You have an essay. You know, you can have a, a structured thing. You could have a variety. You could have um, with with diagrams, yeah. and you could have you could use charts. The, the more variables you have in there, the more likely you are to cover the range that you have. And if a student, and you will see when you do the VAC and, and so on, you will see some people have multiple styles. Of the, so, so it doesn't matter how it's taught to them, they will do well, right? You have the, the multimodal thing. Um, but where they are visuals, they have a chance to do well, and where they're auditory or, or, or where they are read right, they, they, they can do well. And, but it doesn't mean that the read right will always get the yeah, you know, you get the advantage because it is spread out in a way in which you so so when we look at our assessments, that's why you need to look for the spread of, of, of questions, how the type the, the, the types of questions and activities that they actually have to do. Dr. Henry, are you allowed in your reflections to critique the theory that you have critique the theories? Of course, yeah. Well why why do you say critique? I'm saying critic only because as much as the learning theories probably have been tested and proven, mm -hmm. and it have resulted in some kind of learning. I'm just questioning the quality of learning because I am seeing, and this is my introduction to these theories, some inherent power structures inside of there. 
Because they don't want to take that. Because they come to you as the teacher. Correct, yes. And so, so when, when I try to teach a class in that mode, yeah. that mode shocks them, it puts them into all kind of similarities. Yeah, yeah. So when you talk, so talk about that power struggle in the class, that, that political country, where if you try to give off that mm -hmm. response, well, what we call it is, you know, giving them the responsibility of learning, mm -hmm. right? For their own learning. For their own learning and right. stuff. And then after that, the responsibility of teaching the other student. But even the word giving is problematic because we're still assuming that degree of power. So it's almost like yeah, no. we are to do because we're learning inherent. All right, I think you have more knowledge than the student in their own hands. There's yeah. nothing wrong with you having more knowledge than the student in the classroom yeah. session. Yeah. In, in yeah. his yeah. own yeah. life, he may yeah. have more power than you. If that person is a mechanic and you don't know anything about cars, and your car breaks down, he has the power. And he can't say to you, well, fix it. You have come to him to fix the car. Because he has the power of doing the car. No, it's they not can't be afraid of the knowledge that you have as, as, a, as a faculty. It's not that I'm saying that I'm afraid of the knowledge. It's that I'm saying uh -huh. that when we, to me, it should feel like a classroom. Um, may I space. interrupt? Yes, ma'am. I, I have to interrupt. Yes. Because I just happened to glance at my watch. <laughs> <laughs> and to my horror, it's 25 yes. past four. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is the thing about having fun in the class. Because I know that discussion. Because yes. go on ad nauseum. So, so we can have a forum discussion. So we went, we, went, we went put that on the forum. We went put that on the forum. No, who said it, right? No, All right, did the forum. I'm going back there. So let us try and just wrap up this end because um, this I'm putting this up. This is we are going into the which is which is what we have been talking about with our new PowerPoint. Um, I just want to make a point about learning styles and the learning style is a preference. Is that how they prefer it? It doesn't necessarily mean that that is the best way for them. It's how they they like it. All right. Yeah, so we're going to talk about factors that affect your yeah. appetite, yeah. so it, I think no matter how much we present or how we try, because these adults learners sometimes they come straight from work, they're calling a sleeping in class, yeah, yeah. they're late, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about factors like that included. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, 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 we were talking because um, we were in our session, and I think that the trend we were looking at students, the, the learners and adult learning principles. And it's, what they bring to the table and, and how we could manage that. We were to be looking at that. So I just manage those learners because you don't have a certain respect that you really have to give them because they are not coming tabula rasa and hopefully. And, and being able to use what they bring is important. One, one of the difficulties we have is using what they have. We have that difficulty with all levels of learners. Um, but with, uh, with, and we should really make a greater effort to use what people have in facilitating it. Because if you understand, which is, I think I have it somewhere. I just want to show you one thing. So all of this is on the PowerPoint that you will see, and you will look at it and, mm -hmm. and research it and so on. Mm -hmm. That's all good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I to the list of what oh, we, what we're going to do <laughs> when we when we do uh, the, the, the rest of the um, the thing we will look at, we will look at actually how people learn. There's a thing that, mm -hmm. that, that, that we have, how they, um, the root learning, the importance of that, we will just forget that root learning has a role. It has a role, mm -hmm. right? So root learning, making meaning of learning, mm -hmm. and constructivism, we will look at, at those elements um, the, the next day, as well as the, when we do some of it online, we will have a discussion uh, we will use a discussion forum um, to explore some of these. Um, so I we won't have to meet before then. So I will keep putting up there. And what I'm asking you to do is to please um, go online. Go online and see what's there. Um, I want you to do, over the weekend perhaps, um, the, your <coughs> learning style inventory and your teaching style inventory. So if you look here, you, see, you go to um, you will see Grasher's inventory for teaching style, right? So you can 
Um, click on there. Can I check it out to see if it's there? Yes. Um, and, and you can look at this. We, we will talk about this online. Expert, formal authority, person. Everybody wants to be a facilitator. So I want to see what you get to see if you are really probably a delegator. You're giving them all you would. Is the thing another delegator way? <laughs> but anyway, um, Grasha says what all of these mean and and, and things. Um, you also, I also want you to do your VAR, and you will see what they say about um, VAR. The little might be the kinds of things that you can do to help them. Flow charts with steps, oral discussion topics and form, and, and study groups. Read, write, read other sources and very rewrite ideas, role play, hands on activities. So we have guidelines for, and, and, and the students can actually use the guidelines. So <coughs> when you have your classes, let them do their learning, let them go online, do it, send it to the people, and you will take the information to, them, to let you know what, and they can go and look and see what study strategies are useful to them. All right, so, so you know what you're doing? Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Those two activities, and you'll go on the forum and express yourself. You have that? Yeah. Uh, 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 you also said to do the portfolio thing, to check out the portfolio. Oh, yes, check out the portfolio. That's another slide. Why did you choose this? Sorry, this is my name. This is my name. This is my name. Remember, after the portfolio, you start to say that, and you do that on the list. Yes. And I want to put it on the yard. And it for your children. All right, everybody. I want you to give me, if I to leave, you must give me a word, a word that had meaning for you today. One word. The word of the day. What's your word of the day? Yes, Daisy, what's your word? Why do you take, what's your word, Suzanne? Living, strength, and weakness. That is three words, four words. Ah. Living, strength, and weaknesses. All right, word or phrase. All right, Susan. Yes, uh, Nika. Chevron. Um, you can't leave unless I get my word. Teaching style. Teaching yeah. style. Yeah. Right, and, and do yours and see what yours is. Yeah. All right? Jennifer.
preparation. Preparation. You see, she's a trainer, you know. Yes, preparation. Yes, Dr. Paul. Happy. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Happy. Happy sheets, happy sheets, happy sheets. Happy, happy. 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 Very good, very good. All right, so thank you. We keep connected. Um, <laughs> Okay. We see you on the 20th. Yes, on the 20th, we uh -huh. would have everything. We would be in contact in between. All right? Thank you so much for coming and for participating. And we will, we will continue on this <laughs> What is a girl? What is a girl? All right? Go ahead. <laughs> You, you see what I, what I mean? They don't want to leave. They don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Paul and Dr. Sabin, I'm proud of you all. Thank you very much. You stay and we have a person who has We have to so many friends that they have to be for my for my